Hello all, welcome back to the Scenery Farm. I am uh, making a jacked uh, flat. So a flat that has a jack on it and it's hinged in place so that you can just kind of stand it up pretty quickly. Um, I've shown you how to make a jack. I've shown you how to make a flat. Um, this is me just doing it together. Um, it's for a small uh, kids theater group and uh, they just want to be able to put some mild amount of scenic paint on it and give it some uh, quick setting up. I'm cutting the styles here on the miter saw. This is just one by three pine. The ends have been waxed so and they're not always perfectly square. So there's uh, me with the stop block uh, and I'm just cutting them. Uh, yeah, and I'm making two flats so I need four of them. And those are 16 foot pieces of pine. Uh, just trimming off the end, cutting them seven foot ten and a half. Uh, and now I'm doing uh, the rails. The rails are eight feet because the flats I'm making are four by eight. And the uh, toggles I'll be making in a little bit uh, will be three foot ten and a half. Now, the length of these styles and toggles, as I've said before, they're pretty standard. Um, I know that the thickness of the pine is uh, an inch and a half when you get two of them together, so I take an inch and a half away, and th that's very consistent with this uh, film stock pine. Um, but this here, what I did was I took two little blocks and I put them up against a stop block, and that's how I uh, made the toggles three foot ten and a half. I take one of the rails, I put it up against the end of the stiles, I clamp it together and I make sure the clamp sits above the stile so I can get the tape measure underneath it. And then I mark it on two foot centers and I go three eighths of an inch on either side of two feet just so I can get it as accurate as possible. I could just one line center it, why not? But uh, three quarters is a lot less um, than an inch and a half when you're working with two by four and that's just me using a little square and I'm realizing that my pencil had no lead so I had to go back and make the lines because uh, there were just simply scores in it. Um, uh, put the quick grip away because I don't need it uh, and now I keep half of the material and the other half of the material I move off to the side so I can build another flat later. I have this is uh, I uh, sometimes screw this up where I'm doing the the styles and I'll flip one of the styles upside down so I won't have the marks on it but the whole point of marking them all at the beginning is so you don't have to think about it um, I the compressor was off when I started this so the compressors running in the background or uh, you know filling with air because uh, there's a pinhole leak somewhere in the system but I just grabbed my battery powder uh, powered uh, 16 gauge nailer. I'm putting inch and a half pins in there just to hold it. Um, this flat will be seen close up by a bunch of people and they might want to show the edges on stage. And it's easier to fill uh, the pinholes um, and a screw hole because I put two nails in uh, splitting the center kind of three quarters of an inch away from the front and the back of the flat. And then what I do is I countersink it. You can see my hands are staying well away from the nailer. I'm using my forearm to hold it. Uh, so I don't, if the nail goes in, it flips up. It doesn't go into uh, me at all. And this is just a number eight countersink. Uh, it's a Dimar dealio with an eighth inch uh, replaceable uh, jobber bit or twist bit and uh, then the actual countersink um, on the unit for the number eight head has carbide uh, cutters on it. And this is, oh, this is really exciting. I'm putting in screws. Yep, oh yeah, no, I really mastered this. And I'm just putting inch and a half screws in. I could, uh, you know, I'd put inch and three quarter in, possibly. Um, I didn't glue the frame uh, because there's plenty of glue from the skin to the pine. Uh, and you know this is the glue bottle it's uh, the tip of it is kind of filled with uh, gunk so I put a little uh, in, uh, inch and a half number eight screw down the hole and then pull it out so I twist it down the hole to grab the dried glue and then I pull it out and eventually the tips wear out 
but they'd wear out no matter what you did anyways. And I ride the glue bottle along the edge of the pine so it's consistent. And I try not to glue and then reach over the glue so I get less glue on my apron, but you know, I get glue on my apron. Oh, that's the, uh, I bought the Cat's Moses, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, apron, because I wanted to give it a try. Yeah, it's a well-made product. Yeah, no issues with it. I like it. Um, uh, it's about the same price as you get one anywhere else. Um, uh, yeah, this uh, I keep switching my aprons. This one will probably wear out within oh, a couple more months, maybe, or uh, the second I start getting holes in the pockets, I'll just kind of move on. And that one will move over to what I'm using my sawmill. I got to do a video of the sawmill at some point. Um, yeah, it's going to be covered now, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that's this is just. Um, a lot of people call it Luan, uh, a lot of people call it Moranti, a lot of people call it Mahogany Door Skin, or locally at the Home Depot it's called Floor Underlayment. Um, yeah, I mean it's uh, 4 by 8 it's about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Uh, where we are, the uh, the Luan, or uh, we, I call it Luan, um, the Luan is uh, oversized, so it's about 4 foot 16th of an inch by 8 foot 8th of an inch. Um, so I get it to one quarter, squared along the short edge, uh, and then this is me just kind of lining it up every two feet if I can, and then putting a pin in and then going back. And so I did the short end, then I did the long end, then I do the opposite end, I do the overhang, and I, I kind of have to figure out what the overhang is, and then I make it consistent just by feel right across. Now, the T-square I'm about to use, I'm just putting a mark on center, two, four, and six feet, because it's an eight foot flat. But the T-square I'm gonna use, it's square. I have to, like, it, it's, a, it's a decent T-square, it's made by Starrett. Um, but uh, the thing is, I constantly am doing this, and I get glue on it, and I'm lazy about wiping it off. So it's no longer square, because it has glue bumps on it, and so I'm silly. And that's just me using the T-square. I set it off to the side of the lines. I need both lines to make sure I'm centered on the pine, and I just use the T-square the as a bit of a, a guide. I have a number of trim routers. Oh, the plug thing broke. The retractor broke on it. The lock? The retractor's fine. The lock to hold it in place is gone, so I just use a pony clip because there's nothing wrong with the extension cord. Um, and this is me just doing the flush trim bit. This is where it was overhanging about a sixteenth. This is it overhanging about an eighth of an inch. Um, and I usually have at least one trim router, and I don't need to trim the bottom and the, the other edge because it's lined up. I usually have one trim router with a round over and one trim router with uh, a flush trim uh, or one of my other routers um, with it. And this, God, this router is, uh, I was just thinking about this the other day. This router, I bought it in 97, so it's a 25-year-old router. And I'm just this side of 50, and it's weird. I feel like I'm 20 still. Getting older is weird. Anyways. So, I just put a little wee eighth inch round over, and this is me just blowing off the flat, because uh, I have uh, a bucket of mud over here, and this bucket of mud uh, has been cut with water, and uh, I have a couple six inch knives, and uh, just open up the bucket, and I usually put half in a new bucket, and that's just, there's someone else is using it, and they got some dust in there. Anyways, so this is me just kind of filling the flats, uh, I'm okay at it. I'm not great at it. Scenic painters are amazing at it. They're like magic. Um, I do something really brilliant here. I, uh, <laughs> I, I do a bit of the line, and then I decide it's important for you not to see what's going on. So I move the bucket, and oh, oh, you can't see what I'm doing. And then I kind of think about it. That's stupid. So at any rate, the filling is done. It's the next day. I'm out splitting wood. Uh, so I'm a little over PPE'd here. I was using my chainsaw. This is a, a drywall sander. I got really kind of sick and tired of uh, sanding mud with a palm sander. So I bought a cheapo drywall sander, which sometimes I even use for drywall. Uh, and I just sand the mud back and it's really quick. It's, it's awesome. Uh, there's a little bit of mud over the edge. So where's my, where's my foamy sanding block and I just have a foamy sanding block because I was doing some drywall stuff recently um, yeah you just sand it get rid of the drywall the over the excess comes right off when you put it on you put as little 
drywall mud on as possible and so there that's filled and done and I've done that to two of them the uh, what was it 20 and 7 8 I think it was between the top uh, between the rail and the first toggle and so I have one clean edge already on this 2 by 6 and so I'm just uh, cutting it at I think it was 20 and 7 8 I, d I double checked it like I measured where it was and I need four of those because I'm doing two flats, though I think I only show you the one of them. And uh, there's a great big pile of pine there because my off bed pin's not there. That's just silly. At any rate, uh, cutting away, done that. And then I get to the flat. And what I'm doing is I'm marking a point to figure out the five and quarter, five and three eighths, whatever the hell they made this to, or it's dried to, or what they made it at. And then I figure out what that full distance is minus the two by, and then I cut that in half, and then that's my mark to one edge of the uh, uh, brace that I'm putting in there. Put the brace in there. I can't. You can't get everything perfect. Like I mean, you can get it perfect for one fastener, and then you kind of work your way around. Um, yeah, I, when I got this nailer, I mean, it's a great nailer, but. Uh, I think this one has two sets, uh, two triggers that come with it, and one of them is a multiple fire trigger, and one of them is a single fire trigger. And I, I didn't flip it out. And now I'm not sure where I put it. Might be with my manuals. At any rate, it always fires. It just fires off in more than one, and I'll get around to dealing with that. Uh, that's a seven sixteenths crown, um, uh, eight uh, sixteen gauge uh, nail or staple. And I use inch and three quarter or two inch fasteners. Um, you can get them actually with a heat an adhesive on them sometimes, and uh, and when it goes in, it gets pretty hard and hot and makes it like uh, a glue. This is one of the jacks, and if you want to see how to make a jack, go to the how to make a jack video. Um, and uh, I'm figuring out that I made it right, and it's two feet on center. I'm double checking. I'm just going to do my marks here, so I can get it top and bottom and. Uh, you know that's as good as a plum uh, measuring the edges because it's uh, within a hair square um, and then I uh, I want to lock it in place so that it doesn't move when I am uh, putting the hinges on uh, and I actually I think the next one I uh, see how it, it it sticks up a bit I eventually just moved to screwing it in place uh, because uh, I, I do believe that I'm doing this wrong, and I kind of go, ah, yeah, I think you're doing this wrong, James. Uh, you got your lines. Yep, that's what you want to do. Yep, that's where you want to put the hinges. You don't want the hinges in between the jack and the flat. You want them so that the jack is right up against the back of the flat. Um, and uh, I just I get it on those lines because it's going to be two feet on center. I've placed the back flap hinges, the two-inch back flap hinges, um, you can use, you know, whatever hinge you want, really. I mean, th these ones have a, uh, from the side of the plate to the barrel, it does bounce, uh, bump out a bit, um, just like a door hinge would. But these ones are kind of, the steel is mild enough that it kind of bends flat. But uh, if you're going to use a, a door hinge, uh, uh, you're going to be putting the barrel right up against the, the wood and it'll squeak. But you don't really care, I guess. Um and I'm just using three quarter inch uh, number eight screws. They have a nice aggressive thread and a decent point on them. So I don't really have to pre-drill them when I'm not right beside the uh, um, uh, end uh, or edge of a piece of wood. And, uh, and, and again, most of the time I find that, and that one I didn't, uh, most of the time I find that if I just aim for the center and walk it to the center of the hole as I start drilling, it, I, I'm good, but occasionally I have to move the hinge because I bugger up the hole. You could use a Vix bit if you want to, uh, to center it, or a center punch or similar, uh, or mark all the holes and then eyeball it. Like, you can do all those things, but uh, with these hinges and these screws, uh, I find that I can, sh I can get it pretty darn close every time and it's not a fine piece of furniture so meh doesn't really really matter at all i pull the screws out uh, that i use to help hold it in place and uh, pop off yield uh, quick grip uh, and there's the uh, side bench that just ends up holding stuff and things and this is it stood up it's got the sandbag on it 
pop the sandbag off, fold it, and you can go and stack it or lean it up against the wall. This is me wandering around the shop thinking about what am I going to do next? All right, you all take care.